Okay, I have the brand new Apple Studio display. This is something that I've been waiting for for the past six years. I'm not even joking, I'll explain why in just a bit, but before then, let's quickly unbox this baby up and then do some tests and compare it against some of my other displays too. So let's break the seal. Oh no, the box got damaged. Let's continue with the unboxing. Pretty awesome wallpaper on the front. Let's lift the top. And there we go. And you have these uh, this mechanism that simply lifts and reveals the entire display. This is lighter than I thought, by the way. And then inside the box, we just have a booklet. Definitely not the most energy efficient display. We also get the uh, Thunderbolt cable, which is now braided, so it looks super, super nice and way more premium than before. And to my surprise, uh, we also get a pair of Apple stickers, which uh, this is the first time that I'm seeing Apple stickers uh, included with an Apple accessory. Usually these are just for the main products. Uh, we have the power cable. So now let's take the plastic wrap off. Wow, okay, this is the best looking monitor, aside from the Pro the Space DR that I've seen. Okay, so I've been using and testing this for a bit, and I have a few things that I want to address. The first one being the design. And this monitor is by far the best looking display that I have ever used. It's got a solid aluminum build, which feels cold to the touch, so it's crazy premium. The glass then sits on top of the aluminum frame, and you can actually see how it even sticks out. Then of course we have the perforated vents on the top, which actually resemble the look of the speakers on a MacBook. Then we also have some vents on the bottom for uh, the actual speakers. And the back looks just as stunning. Uh, we have the flat frame, uh, similar to the M1 iMac, and we also have the gigantic black Apple logo in the middle. Speaking of the iMac, this monitor is actually thicker than the M1 iMac, which is quite strange considering that, you know, the iMac is a full-on computer, whereas this one is simply just a monitor. And they both have a very similar resolution, uh, 5K on this monitor and 4.5K on the iMac. So why is it thicker then? Well, the second thing that I want to mention is that this monitor seems to actually have a fan inside. So if I put my hand on top of these vents here, I can actually feel some airflow. I'm curious to see a teardown of this, as I do believe there might be something more to this monitor uh, than it seems. Now, I've tried the speakers and they were loud with a good amount of bass, but I just felt that the overall sound quality was just not as impressive as I initially expected. I mean, sure, compared to my 14-inch Michael Pro speakers, uh, this sounded a million times better, but compared to my full-sized HomePod at home, uh, this just isn't as good. Still, they're definitely loud enough to fill an entire room, especially if you don't have any dedicated speakers. Although, if you do have dedicated speakers, even some lower-end ones, uh, those will very likely outperform this display. Now, in terms of the built-in webcam, it's bad. Like, really bad. Here's a quick quality comparison between the webcam on the Studio display, the one on my MacBook, and the one on my iPhone. The iPhone is the best, uh, the MacBook looks very processed and cartoonish, while the Studio display looks less processed, but extremely noisy. And that's because the Studio display is the only one that comes with center stage. Essentially, it uses a wide-angle camera uh, that can track your movement when you're uh, in a video call, for example. And that's because it crops in and it zooms into the sensor quite a lot. It's a 12 megapixel sensor, but the uh, resulting video file would be, well, 1080p, so 2 megapixels in size. Now, this sounds awesome, but in reality, uh, the footage is very noisy and... Um, <sighs> Yeah, it doesn't look great, as you can probably tell. I've noticed the same results on the new iPad Air, where the new model with center stage was actually worse than the old one. Now, Apple said that they will improve this with a future software update, but as of right now, the webcam quality is horrific. And keep in mind that we're also in an extremely well-lit environment here with studio lights. In a lower light environment, as you can tell, it's even worse. Now, I want to touch on the overall quality of the panel. Uh, when you're spending $1,600 on a display, you surely aren't spending that for the speakers or the microphones or especially that camera. You're spending that much for the quality of the panel. And this panel is very unique. 
So this is a full 5K retina display, meaning that from the normal viewing distance, you cannot see any pixels at all on the screen. Now think of this as your iPhone or MacBook display, just significantly larger. Now, the reason why I said this is so unique is because there are only two other Retina 5K displays out there. The 27 inch 5K iMac, which Apple does not manufacture anymore, and uh, the LG Ultrafine 5K, which actually uses the exact same panel as the iMac. On top of this, this display is also glossy, meaning that unlike uh, most other displays out there that have a matte coating on top, uh, this one does not have it, which means that it is way more reflective than a lot of the other displays out there. The upside, however, is a significantly clearer image. And to be honest, if you are worried about reflections that much, you can always just, you know, max out the brightness. And to be honest, this monitor is so bright that it actually manages to reduce reflections considerably. Color reproduction and accuracy is just outstanding. Um, as good as it was on the IMAX and the LG Ultrafine, to be honest. Now, some users mentioned light bleeding on the edges. Luckily, I don't have any of this on my unit, but sadly, um, this does seem to be a fairly widespread issue something that the 27-inch iMac never suffered from. But interestingly enough, the new 24-inch iMac does. So if you do notice light bleeding on a black image, make sure to get in touch with Apple and request a replacement unit. So overall display quality thoughts, this is the best display out there for photo and video work at this price point. The next best one is Apple's Pro Display XDR, but that one costs $5,000. That one does offer you local dimming, which this one does not, which I think is a really big miss on Apple's side. Take a look at the blacks on the MacBook Pro. They are perfect, and that's thanks to the mini LED display. Uh, on the studio display, not so much. They look grayish because of the LCD backlight. It seems like Apple intended this display purely for office work during daytime, and not so much for actually watching movies at night. Strange that they included uh, such high quality speakers in here. Okay, so I'm someone who bought the LG Ultrafine 5K display back in early 2017. And since then, I've been using it pretty much every single day. So I was really curious to see how it would compare against the Apple Studio display. Plus, LG made it clear recently that the Ultrafine will be coming back in stock. So if you're looking for a more affordable studio display, the LG costs $300 less for the same 27 inch 5K retina display. And the first difference that I immediately noticed was the brightness. So the Apple Studio display was significantly brighter. This is rated, by the way, at 600 nits. Uh, this one is rated at 500. So I've decided to use our professional colorimeter just to see if this was true. And um, it was actually not. They both lied. So Apple Studio Display only went to a peak brightness of 557 nits, which was quite a bit lower than the advertised 600, while the LG only got to 429, also lower than the advertised 500. While my 14-inch MacBook Pro only got to a peak brightness of 400 nits. Now, in uh, HDR, it can go up to 1600, but it seems like in SDR, it maxes out at 400, instead of the advertised 500. So in terms of the overall brightness, as long as you don't work with any HDR content, then Apple Studio Display is the best option on the market right now. Even better than Apple's Pro Display XDR, which can only achieve 500 nits in HDR, and most other monitors out there can only get to around 250 to 350. Okay, so what about all the other things? Well, in terms of the speakers, they are significantly better on the Apple Studio Display compared to the LG. Just listen for yourselves. <laughs> And now let's do a quick camera comparison. So this is the Apple Studio Display. You can listen to the mics uh, and see how they sound like. So let me know how the quality is. And now this is a webcam and microphone test on the LG Ultrafine 5K. So let me know which one looks better. Both have the same ports on the back, one Thunderbolt for connecting to your Mac and three USB-C ports, but the ones on the studio display are much faster. I was getting about 650 megabytes per second write and 900 read from our external SSD, compared to about 320 write uh, on the LG and 360 read. So that's a pretty big difference. So if you care about actually using these ports for external drives and not just dongles, then the Apple Studio Display will be the best here. But I think that the biggest reason to go for the LG is for the stand. And that's because you can raise it, you can also tilt it, and you can even detach it from its stand to connect it to a vase amount. Apple's one only tilts 
like this. You cannot actually increase its height. And if you're like me and you like using your MacBook like this in front of your screen, you won't really be able to as uh, the lid of the MacBook will be blocking a portion of the display. And this is only the 14 inch model. So the only solution to this is to either move the display just further away from your MacBook or prop it up on these beautiful iPad Pro boxes. Now, Apple does offer you a raisable stand, but that one costs $400 extra and it still does not rotate and cannot be removed in case you want to attach a vase amount. Now, I do plan on using the Apple Studio display as my home monitor and seeing how it performs, uh, how that Apple A13 chip inside is. I'm also going to calibrate it professionally and compare it against my Dell U2720Q, uh, which is a really modern looking DCI-P3 display with crazy thin bezels and some outstanding color accuracy. And I'll cover all of that in my full review. So make sure to subscribe if you want to see that long term and more detailed look. But for now, I would say that for most creative professionals, the LG Ultrafine is the better option. And the only reason why I would go for the studio display is for this design and maybe just maybe uh, for this brighter panel. Other than that, LG it is. Let me know in the comments if you plan on getting any of these. Uh, I left some links and descriptions for each of these. Those are affiliate links, so they do support the channel if you plan on purchasing any of them. I'm Daniel and stay tuned for our Mac Studio video benchmarks. We have one in the works just now. Uh, so yeah, thank you for watching. I'm Daniel, and I'll see you guys in the next one. So Tech, signing out. Cheers.